Pete, your name actually gets a lot of love back in the Chicago area. When Javi was traded, you came in, and I talked to a scout, I was just telling your guys, that told me today, he goes, PCA is the best prospect in the entire system. When you hear that, how does that make you feel? So that's a nice compliment. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of good prospects in this organization, as as you know, as as a lot of the Chicagoans know as well. I mean, it could be it could be any number of us. I think that that hold that title, but uh, it's a nice compliment that that I got that. But you know, I'm playing with a lot of guys who could also be considered the top prospect on on this high A team. So, so you yeah. are a first round pick of the New York Mets, and your phone rings, and who's calling you and telling you, "Hey, man, thanks, but we just traded you." Oh man, it was, uh, it was actually my, it was my friend Mark, uh, you know, I, I got a whole bunch of calls coming in. It was my friend Mark with the Mets who saw it and, you know, I, I talked with him briefly, but then uh, Adam Eunice reached out and we had a very nice phone call and, um, you know, it was, it, was, it was shocking and surreal, but, you know, then I think it ended up working out for the best. So I'm forever grateful to the Mets, but, uh, you know, I'm also, you know, grateful to be here as well. So if I had said to you the day before, dude, they're going to trade you, you would have gone, you're out of your mind. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely, yeah. I was going about my weekend. I was, uh, you know, I was rehabbing the shoulder and, and mm -hmm. just going about my business and uh, definitely wasn't wasn't uh, expecting it. But So who reaches out from the Cubs then? Is that Jed? I, that was, well, it was Adam Eunice first just to kind of let me know, hey, we're, uh, we're, ta we're taking you off the Mets' hands, I guess. And um you know, as get out to Arizona kind of as quickly as possible, pack up all your stuff and, and come see us, you know. And here you are. And here I am. So fan, the fan base in Chicago is insane, rabid, crazed, amazing. That's right. They know the name. And if you go on Twitter, PCA, 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 if you have a two-hit day, you make a great, you made a great <laughs> diving catch on the warning track. That's right. It's in the news in Chicago. Are you prepared for... What's around the corner? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think seeing all that, um, it makes me excited to go play for the fans. I feel like it's, it's pretty cool that they're taking an interest in, in the younger set of players in the organization. And uh, I think it makes us, makes us all excited to, to go do it in person, you know? So when Theo came in, he and Jed put together what they call the Cubs way. What is the Cubs way? You are one of their shining lights. I think the Cubs way is, is, is respecting the game, respecting where your feet are on the field. and. Um, you know, I think we all try and do a good job of that, but uh, that's organizationally. I think it starts from, you know, starts from the top. So, you know, whatever ends up happening with, with Contreras and, and Happ and all those guys, you know, I think we're all, uh, we're all lucky to have, have them, you know, to kind of model how we want to be a Cub off of. So when you, do you pay attention to the big league team? Oh, yeah. You know, Ian Happ's probably gone. Contreras, do you guys pay attention to that? Does it? Do anything to your thoughts about the organization, or it's business. No, you know it's business. I, I get it, but you, you see Wilson and how much he loves this organization. Like, that's uh, I think that says a lot about who the Cubs are. And um, yeah, like I said, it's a good good guy. You know, good guys to to model how to be a Cub off of. I think they they definitely do it right. So for fans who are they're disappointed the team's not doing well at the big league level. Here you're a defending champion team. You've got a really good baseball team. You've got this beautiful stadium. What would your message be to Cubs fans about what's coming? It may take a little time, but it's coming. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think the the the, the Cubs will always love love their guys that are that are out there now. I feel like uh, that's how I grew up a Cubs fan. That's how my dad raised me a Cubs fan. Um, your dad was born in Chicago, yes, right? Yes, sir, yeah. Naperville. Um, but. I guess my message to them would be just just wait patiently, you know. I think keep enjoying the baseball that's being played there. Keep enjoying the wins we're having, uh, the good days and the bad days. But, uh, you know, there's a lot more good days to come. Uh, and, again, like I said, the, all, all the guys on the high A team that will be up there eventually, the double A, low A, everybody's excited to, to go play at Wrigley one day and, and go win a championship. Are you more well known for being PCA in the Cubs system, a first-round pick, or because your mom was in Little Big League? Definitely my mom being in Little Big League. Uh, no, I, I don't know. That, great movie. Shout out Little Big League. Uh, mm -hmm. Shout out mom. But um, yeah, no, definitely mom. So mom and dad were both in the acting world. Did you ever act? Did you ever think about doing that? No, never. Never wanted to. Being on set with them was fun and all. And uh, it was an interesting, you know, interesting thing going to see the behind the scenes growing up. But no, I, I never wanted it. And, they never wanted that for me.
No. It was all sports. All sports, all baseball. Uh, give me some nugget you have not revealed about yourself. Like, wow, well, that's actually something different. I'm a soccer fan. I don't know if that pleases baseball fans, but I'm a soccer fan. I like uh, I like Chelsea. Oh. Uh, we grew up a big Didier yeah, Drogba United. fan. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, I grew up a big Didier Drogba fan, John Terry, Frank Lampard, you know. Uh, so I'd say, yeah, people people wouldn't expect me to be a soccer fan, but I am. Have you ever gone to a game in Europe? No, not in Europe. Never been to Europe, but I went to I, I went to one in, uh, in in Glendale actually at the Cardinals place. I mm-hmm. got to see uh, I got to see a, a, a cup qualifier between Colombia and USA years ago, and that pretty was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Yeah, Definitely. I think have, I saw Chelsea lose two to one at Manchester United. Mm-hmm. I don't think people realize when they see Cubs Cardinals, it's cool. It, right. They have no idea what the fan base is. I'm, like I, there. I mean, I, I only see it on TV, so I can only imagine. But yeah, that's that's different level of uh, of sports. When you fandom. get your first big contract, you get yourself a flight, and you get over there. I hear that? I will definitely. Last thing, offensively, describe your game. Jed was on with us and said he made some swing adjustments, and he needed to, and they really clicked. Definitely. Um, a lot of work was put in swing wise in the off season. Uh, I had the time, you know. Uh, which was nice. I think I needed it because it, it uh, you know, ultimately I think is letting me showcase a little bit more of the power that I have that, that you know, people weren't getting to see. Uh, and I, yeah, I think, uh, you know, clean up, clean up the swing path uh, has opened my game up a little more. You know, I'm a, an aggressive hitter and uh, I like, you know, I like attacking pitches and I like doing damage, but it's nice to be able to, you know, seed in a bit bigger of a sample size for myself this year. Thanks for your time. Thank you. So Cole, the Cubs obviously need pitching. They're developing you as a starter. So give me your thoughts on the Cubs' way that they talk about being a member of this organization. Man, it's a blessing. You know, it's kind of everything that you think of. Like growing up as a kid, you want to be a professional baseball player. And I feel like, you know, the Cubs have that, that just that tradition that they carry with their name. And so like being in this position, like being able to help them out in the long run is kind of the biggest thing for me. And, uh, you know, I take every single day with a with a grain of salt, knowing that I, I can be up there and uh, contributing to the big league team. So today I was I was listening to the White Sox Rockies game, and I'm listening to the announcer go, "Well, you go five innings and you're a horse today." And then I watch Max Scherzer pitch, and that guy's like, "If I don't go nine, I didn't do my job." So where is the mentality for a young pitcher? For a young pitcher, I want to go out there and give my team the longest amount of time I can, get us in the best position to win a baseball game. So whether that's you know going five innings with pitch count or seven or you know you know kind of whatever whatever they have ready for me. So, pitch count? Yes, sir. Okay, Fergie Jenkins, who you, you didn't get to see pitch, he's in the Hall of Fame, and he's like, I would throw 150 in a game. Now, oh my God, we're third time <laughs> through the order, we gotta yank you. Yeah. What is the pitch count to you? It's, uh, it's, it's been a really big thing, especially coming off an injury. It's, uh, it's a really good way for, I mean, for them to monitor like, kind of the workload of like, younger players, and so, I would say it, it's good. It's good, but as a, as an as a competitor, you want to go out there, and keep getting more, mm-hmm. keep getting more. But like, I understand the whole the whole theory behind it. But it is sometimes frustrating as a competitor. So the big club is struggling, and they're going to trade away Wilson Contreras. They're going to probably trade away Ian Happ. Do you pay attention to that stuff, or do you look at it and go, "Let's open it up opportunities for our guys to move through"? I mean, I, th- I look at it in, in a couple different ways. As a you know. Kind of those two guys have been a symbol for the Cubs for a long time, mm-hmm. but I also look, kind of look at it as well, like, you know, wherever we can have guys come in and they think that there, it'll be a better fit somewhere else. And so, I mean, however the Cubs kind of view it is kind of, I feel like, the best way to, to go about it. Do you watch, do you pay attention? I know you've got your stuff. you got to get ready to pitch every fifth day. You're going to go again on Saturday. Do you pay attention to the big league games? I do every now and then. I do every now and then. Kind of right now, especially during the season, it's kind of hard to focus on that, kind of with everything that I got to do to get ready for my start. But, so, uh, so fans who think, boy, the guys in the minors are probably looking up and going, what's going on at the big league club? That's really not the way it is because you have a job to do here to get yourself there. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. You kind of want to do everything that you possibly can here and not really focus on anything else besides, you know, getting your work done here. Okay. 22 years of age. Is there an ETA in your mind when I should be there? You know, I, I haven't really set that in my mind, but I kind of want to make it as quick, as quick as I possibly can. So, I mean, I'm not really setting a timer on it. Do you project yourself as a starter? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because a lot of guys, you, I think they project as a starter, and then they go, oh, maybe I'll move and transition. 
So Ryan Dempster's telling me, yeah, I closed and I had a bunch of saves. There's nothing like them handing you the baseball in the first inning and the game's in your hands. Is that how you feel? Yes, sir. I love being in control of the game. I love every single thing about starting. In terms of dealing with Theo's not there anymore now, but he was when you were drafted, Jed Hoyer and Dan Kantrovitz and David Ross, how much does the big league club impact the way you are trained and prepped to become a big leaguer? I mean, everything we do is kind of based, like, getting us ready for the big league. So I'd say, man, almost 100% everything we do here is kind of like getting us and setting us up for, for Wrigley. And so I'd, I'd say a lot of it. So for fans who are wondering the Cubs way, is that something they preach to you guys? What is the Cubs way? The Cubs way is just, you know, treating baseball respect, always respect the game. You know, they always preached hard 90s. I mean, never, never show the game up you know the baseball gods will they'll, they'll come after you if you if you try to be too good for the game and so you know just play the game how it's supposed to be played jed also told me recently we're becoming a pitching organization with the spin and the this and the that and the lab what how does that impact a guy like you uh, a lot of ways to to work on a, a certain pitches you know like the analytic stuff's came a long way even since i've got drafted in 2018 so all that stuff, you know, can only help me become a better pitcher with, you know, all the data and stuff we have now. So do you find yourself able to use all that data and all of a sudden, oh, I'm getting more spin on my breaking ball, or I'm able to locate my fastball, or I'm able to use my changeup? Yes, sir, yeah. I mean, honestly, every single aspect of pitching will show up on the data, and you can use that to your, your benefit. How much do you get scouting reports when you're going to pitch for the South Bend Cubs that you look and go, okay, I'm facing that guy, here's what he liked. Because Kyle Hendricks said when he was coming up, and that's 10 years ago, there was no scouting reports. He goes, I got up here, and I was like, oh, this information's amazing. Yes, sir, no, we get, we get full reports, every tendency the hitter has, and so it's, it's kind of like, you know, we kind of know what they're the best at, and they know what we're, we're the best at, so it's kind of like power on power, like, you know, when, when it comes down to it. So you will be pitching at Wrigley someday. Yes, sir. That's the plan. Yes, sir. Hey, man, I appreciate your time. Yes, sir. I appreciate you. Me too. Best of luck. Yes, sir. Thank you. So I have never been to your stadium. Yeah. And you kept telling me, come out and just experience it. Okay, I'm blown away by the level yeah. of detail. How did all this come about? Because it wasn't like this before you bought the no, franchise. No, and very few stadiums are like this. Um, it's a combination of, first of all, loving the business. Number two, having an eye for details. No detail is too small. You have to delight in the detail. But more than anything, you have to deliver an experience. It's, you know, to have fun at a ballpark, you can't be dependent upon winning and losing. You have to be dependent upon what kind of experience you're delivering overall from start to finish. And so we took the ballpark experience and broke it down to 24 individual touch points from the moment someone's in their car they get stuck in traffic before they get into the parking lot to the moment they leave the stadium and get into traffic leaving the parking lot. In between those two points in time, there's 24 distinct touch points, whether it's food, service, cleanliness, comfort, security, anything and everything people can think of. We focus on making every touch point surprising and delightful, not just merely satisfactory. And that focused our operations, it focused our training, but it also focused our recruiting. As we recruited people who believed what I believed, and now it's almost like a cult, delivering an amazing experience regardless of the score. So the Cubs moved here. Yeah. It's amazingly And close. they won the World Series right afterwards. How about that? Maybe that's the tie. But they, yeah. Wade Miley's going to pitch here in a rehab. Drew Smiley was here on a rehab. A lot of you, Darvish has been here when he was a Cub. Yeah. So the relationship with the Chicago Cubs has been an amazing thing, right? Yeah. Well, it's such a professional organization. Uh, the conversation I had, you know, years ago with the Cubs was all about player development, training, skill development, mental skills. I mean, everything you could think of in making a great baseball player. Of course, the Cubs are, you know, interested that you know their fans have a good experience here but more than anything they're more interested in how the player develops so we focused on two things here the customer experience absolutely but also the player experience we wanted the players to join the Cubs organization through South Bend and say to themselves we have we are embraced we're being trained we're being taken care of we feel special and as a consequence we're going to give back to the Cubs everything that they're giving to us most businesses 
You just worry about the consumer, the customer. You sell pizza, you sell whatever. You have two masters, the customer and then the Cubs. So you really have to deliver on both ends. Yeah, absolutely. That's in this business, let's face it, in baseball business, certainly in the minor league, not everybody in this stadium is interested in the score. As a matter of fact, statistics show that 85% of the fans that leave a minor league game can't remember the score shortly after they leave. They want a good experience. They want a great experience. However, we do have real baseball fans. They're following the talent that's here. And so, you know, you talk to the players that are here, these are their formative years. You know, they're just out of you know, high school, right out of college. They come here, and you know, we're not low way, we're high A, and of course double and triple after us and then the majors. But when they come here, we want to make sure their experience with professional baseball is an outstanding experience. And they become true Cubs in heart, mind, soul, and skills. Because there is a Cubs way, there is a Cubs culture. And any fan of the Cubs will tell you, it's a really, a, it's a blessing to be a Cubs fan, especially after 2016, because a, you lay a good plan, you execute on that plan, you get smart, hardworking people here with that culture, you can win another series. Walking around with you earlier today, everybody knows you. It, it's, it's almost like a little city here. It's incredible. It is, it is. It's not just South Bend. I mean, a 45 minute drive around our home plate is 750,000 people. And that's typically, people will drive up to 45 minutes. Now, obviously, at Wrigley, people will drive hours to go to Wrigley. Right. But for our stadium, we have a lot of people that come here. But when they come into these, this, this park, the walls that surround them keeps everything out. Politics, unhappiness, violence, political difficulty, wars. I mean, all the stuff you're reading in social media, all the difficulty you're reading in the newspapers, that's all on the outside. Once you once you're, you enter this ballpark, it's a sanctuary. It's your happy place. It's everyone's happy place. And where, while they're here, they'll get the best service, the best food, the greatest experience. And kids, parents, friends, lovers, family will have a great time here. And if they have that great time with that amazing experience that I d detailed earlier, they'll come back and they'll tell their friends.